You're listening to the Business and Life Podcast, where seven days a week, proven entrepreneurs share their success stories, failures, and give you true value on how you can build a great business and an awesome life with your host, Mike Olivas. All right, Kirk, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Great to be here. Absolutely. So tell our listeners a little something uh, unique about yourself, Kirk. So yeah, so I began as a television journalist basically in college. I continued with that for about the better part of 16 years essentially. And at one point I decided I wanted to get my real estate license and I got my real estate license on the side. That eventually became uh, such a great part of my life and a great business that I spun that off and that's um, my what I really do primarily most of the time. But I'm also really fortunate with the TV station that I work for here in Los Angeles, I not only do stuff on camera from time to time, but I also have a real estate podcast right now that we're, we're focused primarily on having conversations that kind of help people understand the real estate process a lot more. And so it's cool to kind of, you know, I, I it's really interesting in that I thought for sure my entire life was going to be spent doing television journalism, but um, over time, the, I, I just kind of evolved and at one point I had meetings with networks in New York and they all asked me, you know, what was the, what was my thing? There were some correspondents that were really good at vegan dieting, other correspondents that were like CrossFit athletes. There were some hosts that work with them that do things with interior design. And at the time, all I knew was journalism and I didn't really have like a specific skill. So I had this whole process where I kind of, you know, brainstormed and really thought through what it was that I really, really liked. And I ultimately settled on real estate because I feel like the great thing about real estate, it's your, not only is it the place where you live, but you know, you decorate it, you, you, you um, deck it out in the way that you like, but it's also an asset. And for many people, it's the one asset they have in their lives. And so it's, I, I like the, the financial freedom and financial independence aspect that it provides. I also like you know, the, the, the kind of when you're nesting and the stuff that you do to kind of like make your own home and, you know, love like investigating smart home things. And, and even, you know, if I have, I have some clients now that I help, uh, we're looking for like old character homes that they can flip. And um, it's just a really stimulating, really cool process. And so I've kind of evolved my life into a place where real estate is what occupies most of my time but I'm fortunate that from time to time, I also still appear on television as well. And I've kind of blended all of that with the podcast that I have going on. And we're, we're in our second season about to start recording our third season as well. So Very yeah, cool. that's awesome. kind of in a nutshell, what I can potentially bring to the table. Yeah, no, that's what well, you have brought it to the table. I think that's kind of cool for a lot of listeners to just kind of hear how some people just take their, their personal experiences and turn it into a professional aspect. And it's not necessary to go by a franchise or start a brick and mortar company and or um, being able to just kind of see that there's different angles of entrepreneurialism out there versus just having to start some big conglomerate, which I think sometimes when you don't realize it, this could still end up being one, right? Those, they, they turn into those once you start realizing you start baby stepping into those processes, Kirk. So it's really the real estate agent side, the podcast, um, homemade is what you said the, the name of it was, and then also Kirk TV News. So you've kind of combined a lot of your experiences into um, some businesses. And sorry, guys, by the way, in the back end here, it's dumping in the back. I'm in, I'm in Bogota, Colombia, for so some of my normal watchers or viewers, if you will. Um, it's not the normal background here, but I am in Colombia for this week. So, so tell a little bit about like some, some of the journey you've been on. So when did you start doing the real estate side, Kirk? So I, so I basically, I was really fortunate very early on. Uh, I had a job actually in college as a on camera personality. And so oh, I was cool. working, I was, I was doing reporting, I was anchoring, I was occasionally doing the weather as well. I went to college in Santa Barbara. And then um, as part of the news business, you have to move from small city to small city in order to gradually work your way, way up to a bigger market. So I worked in Spokane, Washington, I um, worked in Orlando, Florida, and then I came back to Los Angeles. At one point, I um, went to Charlotte, North Carolina as a news anchor and then came back. I'm from Los Angeles, and so was really happy to come back. And I've been here basically ever since. But I've um, And I've been so fortunate over the years, like 
I, I covered the Michael Jackson trial in Santa Barbara really closely. Wow. I covered wildfires and prison riots. And, um, and then going to uh, Orlando, Florida, I did space shuttle launches and um, covering, you know, tropical storm type conditions. Then coming back to LA, I covered the Michael Jackson death. Um, the, the death of Michael Jackson, the death yeah. trial. That was huge. You know, death yeah. of Houston, some tabloid stuff. And then um, eventually have, and, and that has all been like really fascinating and, and a really enriching life experience. And just kind of eventually evolved at one point when I was meeting with a lot of the networks to talk about, you know, all of that stuff, that's kind of what got my, my, um, the wheels kind of turning for me when I realized that it was time to try, time to look into trying something new. And, and, you know, what you're saying about entrepreneurship, what's great and what I wish I had learned like very early on when I was young is you have this mentality versus being an employee or versus being an employer or an entrepreneur. Right. And an employee is really safe and comfortable and fantastic, really, because you go to work nine to five, you get your paycheck every week, you have your two to three weeks vacation, your sick time and everything else. As an entrepreneur, you're kind of on your own and you have full control of your own destiny. And the challenge with television is in television, you're, uh, you're kind of beholden to what management thinks of you. And I've been fortunate that they've liked me and, and, but I also felt like there was more that I could accomplish with my life. And I'm so, I find like being an entrepreneur is so satisfying because you, you know, you wake up, you have full control over what you're going to do with your day. You're not sending in time off requests, but then at the end of the day, if you don't, you know, you're the one that has to make stuff happen and you've got to hustle. And so my day, a lot of times is not like a nine to five yesterday for example i started super early and probably didn't finish until close to midnight and then yeah. turned right back around and then did the did the whole thing all over again but it's so satisfying it's so freeing and rewarding and i think if you take the chance to kind of bet on yourself usually that that bet will pay off and if it doesn't you always can go apply for another job so anyway that's not right to, yeah that's I right no I, no I think that's a great i think that's a great point from the and there's a lot of listeners that either are aspiring to become entrepreneurs, um, Kirk, and also those that have a business, right? And I think you've been able to, for lack of better terms, dovetail it, your experiences into other businesses and or possibilities of, you know, turning them into a business and also even, you know, creating that network. Like you've been all over, it sounds like, from the news side, right? And I would assume those networks have allowed you to be successful in real estate. Right. Yeah. And, and then so when, so. When, when people build this, I've, I've always, I've started a company named team and it's travel entertainment marketing. And I look back at it and people are like, how'd you come up with the name? I go, but my experiences have been travel entertainment marketing world. Right. And so that, that in terms of understanding that your, your experiences can turn into, how do you dovetail that to the listeners? Like, how do you, how can you dovetail that into something tangible, possibly profitable, right? If it's not yeah. profitable out of the gate, that's okay. And when to your point of the solopreneurs out there, um, you mentioned something very valuable, I think, and that's important. People are scared to take the dive because of the unknown, right? And there's limiting beliefs out there, I think. And a lot of times, if you have those, you are just really got to believe in yourself that you can figure it out and do it in the world of Google and podcasts like this and, and Facebook and, and YouTubes. I mean, you can figure it out. There's support groups out there to help you with it as well in terms of just starting something. So I always like try to help people inspire with a story like yours, Kirk, to realize that, hey, you're not going to know everything out of the gate and you're going to figure it out long as you go. You didn't know you were probably going to create a podcast and or still do the TV news. I've got to focus on one thing. Um, mm -hmm. You can still focus on some things and eventually maybe you do focus on only real estate. You, you do only focus on the podcast stuff because you start realizing where some of your value is and all those still are going to turn into the same experiences, I think. So are you currently right. focused on one more than the other right now, Kirk? Um, I would say real estate is my primary focus. Okay. I, what, what I would love to continue to do is to continue to blend the two. And I think, I think people have a lot of fear when it comes to, uh, leaving a rental situation behind and moving into something that they own. And so what that's kind of like my mission statement with the podcast and with a lot of the content that I'm creating is I really want people to understand that owning a property is a lot easier than you think owning a condo, yeah. you know, an income property like a duplex or a house, it's a lot easier. 
and in, in fact, like, you know, we talk about the difference between employee and employer. Employees have a huge luxury when it comes to getting the funding and getting the home loans that they might um, in order to make that happen. So with everything that I do, the goal is to just help kind of spreading that message while also, you know, exposing myself to a larger audience. I'm fortunate in that I think people trust people in you know a media capacity there's a trust and an integrity i mean obviously we have a challenging uh environment now when it comes to like the tribalism of politics and everything and and you know everyone is kind of picking a side but i think when you're on television and you're doing whether it's a podcast or you have you know a prominent social media presence i think there's a trust that goes along with that and it all, and it is a self-sustaining kind of Kind of mechanism that can like help um, continue to drive business and and continue to be something that's really helpful from a marketing perspective right. perspective right. too. So yeah, ab- ab- absolutely. And I, so yeah, so I would love to continue kind of on this path and see where it goes. One of the yeah. things that I learned is like when I was in college, I was so narrowly focused on wanting to get into television that like I had blinders on and was missing a lot that was kind of happening around me. Like I went to college in Santa Barbara at the same time as uh, the founders of Lyft. And um, not that I was like in the same social circles, but that was at the same time that like Google and, and the early days of Facebook and, and other startups were beginning. And I was so kind of focused on television that I wasn't paying attention. And not that I have any regrets, but I think if I had been a little bit more open-minded, maybe I would have, adjusted my path ever so slightly to kind of seize an opportunity like that and i think now i've kind of you know with age and maturity i've kind of learned to you know keep my eyes open and like a very open mind about what's happening and that's kind of how i've evolved into this place where i am now too i mean like i even there's projects that i'm working on a friend you know because of my network i have friends that are producers and there's uh different treatments that we're working on for some show some show possibilities there's all sorts of directions I can go with this podcast right. and um, you know, and it may not ever amount to, and none of these may ever amount to anything, but just keeping an eye open and trying to seek out, you know, all these different things. It's a- Life Nation, we're all striving towards different goals. Maybe your goal is to finally quit the eight to five time, quit your job or take the you know, next step with your existing business, whatever the goal may be, regardless of your reasons. If you are serious about taking the next step, and finally trying to build the life that you deserve, the life that you want to live, take the leap of faith. Go to michaellevis.com and let's discuss your goals and life. It's 100% free. There's no obligation. It's M-I-K-E-O-L-I-V-A-S.com. Schedule a quick call. I'd love to help. That's okay. To, I think it's okay for the listeners out there to realize it's okay to dabble, right? You got to dabble yeah. here and there and, that, and that's okay. And then when it's all said and done, also know where your focus is. Can you focus on several things no can you dabble in a few things yes however yeah. your focus you know um is definitely important uh mentors of mine and, and the word focus and the acronym that we've all come up with and have heard a million times is follow one course until success follow one course until success and you just stick it in your head and i try to help stick it in entrepreneurs minds that i help coach as well but in reality yeah i dabble right like i'm doing a podcast i have other companies and so in reality understanding once at some point you realize that it's all you right if you can if you're able yeah. to get better and better at what you do and your mind and your and your skill set you can monetize it and if it doesn't need to be something that you want to monetize and you just want to do the podcast for the heck of it heck a lot of people do that next thing you know they got a lot of listeners and they start monetizing you right and so there's a lot of yeah. different angles in terms of who you're who you're who you're kind of um reaching out to in your demographic i guess kirk but also you know, for example, for your podcast, there's a lot of people that likely are going to realize that they just like Kirk. And that's what, that's what helps, right? There's a million people out there to listen to, but they just, who do you resonate with? And it's right. no different than your managers liking you in, in, the, um, in that world of television because they, they like you. So the listeners are going to like you and the viewers are going to like you. And so personality is a big deal. I try to, we try to help with that more and more, especially in the millennial demographic to have more of it versus personality yeah. on a phone and an Instagram page isn't real right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, this is what yeah. we're doing is, and, and that's definitely no, important. Totally. So what are you, what are you really excited about right now, Kirk, in terms of what you got going on? You got a few things in the pipe that you're working on. And one thing, obviously that you're focused on the real estate side, but yeah. what excites you the most in your industries? You know, like I, honestly, I feel like everything that I have going on right now in my life, 
I've never been happier. I think I'm at the happiest place I've ever oh, that's been. That's great, man. Congratulations like for that. That's most, great. No, thank you. I feel like I'm the most content. And I, um, I think, you know, I'm really happy to do the real estate stuff. I'm really fortunate that I can still, you know, work in television. I've wanted to do a podcast for a really long time. And so I'm really excited with that. That's really stimulating. I, um, you know, there's some other projects that I'm just starting to work on too. It's like, I, I'm, I'm pretty much, I feel like I'm li living a version of my best life. And awesome. so, I, you know, I could go to the gym a little bit more. I could be, I, <laughs> I, I could be eating a little <laughs> bit better, but like, that's all part of the, part of the growth and the evolution. But, uh, I definitely am, I'm really content with everything. And I think, you know, it's, it's really like one day at a time, continuing to plug away Right. And I, I mean, where I am, it, when it comes to like starting real estate, it took me almost an entire year to get my first transaction. And I've been fortunate that, you know, that, and that was the, the fall of 2016. And I've been fortunate that about 42 transactions later, I've sold a little bit over $40 million worth of property in Southern California. And it was just, you know, and that really, it really was like, one step after another, one day after another, you know, just, just continuing to do the work and plugging away. And I'll, I'll, I have an associate that I kind of remind this to from time to time is, you know, you, you definitely don't necessarily see the light at the end of the tunnel, but you got to just keep plugging away. And then all of a sudden, like one thing leads to another and it snowballs and you have all these like fantastic opportunities that present themselves to you. And, and it's, it's just a matter of doing the work. You know, there's obviously no substitute, but, right. um, you know, and I don't know if you're familiar with like Malcolm Gladwell and I may, I'm paraphrasing here, but he talks a lot about the 10,000 hours that it takes to kind of like learn a skill and get going. And so you really, the bulk of that time you're spending just plugging away and getting to a certain level. And then it's almost like self-sustaining and just keeping up with it. I mean, I'm fortunate that my real estate business is really primary, primarily referrals at this point. It wasn't that way at the beginning, but as word has spread, that's so amazing. That, that's yeah. been everything. And so, yeah. and, and you don't have to market, market you're in good shape. Yeah. 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 No. So it's awesome. And so like life is definitely good. I just keep, you know, hope to continue to go up and up. And it's funny too, you know, if you set goals, I'm looking at, I've, I've sold 20 properties this year. And if I just say like next year, I'd be happy if I sold 23 and you just kind of set those goals and make you easily can make them happen. Right. It's, right. it's way more surprising than you would ever, uh, you'd ever imagine. So yeah, I'm, I think yeah, I'm big on that and big on mindset. Oh, huge mindsets definitely. Mindsets uh, so much of uh, what we talk about on the podcast, and and if you um, ever get a chance to listen, a lot of times at the end of the well, I'll obviously ask you the same question, but people will kind of back into the mindset aspect of getting up and getting it done on a daily basis, especially when you know you don't have to. And that's kind right. of the difference of entrepreneurship. Like you could stay in, you could make less and still be okay. Right. Yeah. Um, and that still is okay. But maybe you put, you know, the time and effort that you put into a podcast like I'm doing now could be honestly come back on a much higher ROI if I focus on my companies, but I like doing this. So I do it. Yeah. I like, well, I like getting the value that you bring like guys like Kirk Hawkins bring to the actual table that like, for example, you just mentioned it took an entire year to sell your first transaction and business and life listeners. If you're, if you're listening to this or watching like an entire year, Right. That's that's where you've had to just think over and over again, like, OK, every month in month in and month out, like this is going to be OK. It's going to be OK. I mean, that's a yeah. mindset that you had. Right, Kirk. That's really hard to do. And that's kind of where you start thinking that you're failing at something when in reality, just believing in yourself and realizing that you just trust the process and the journey and not the outcome, then yeah. you're, you're going to be in really good shape. So I appreciate you giving that that as a really good value to our listeners that hey, it could take a year to make money. And some people might be like, cool, I'm going to stop listening to this right now. Okay, but if you're still listening, then right. you realize like, if you believe in yourself, you can do it. And listen, it doesn't mean just quit your job and do it. Take calculated risks. That's okay, mm -hmm. right? You can still have the full-time job while you start another full-time job. And in reality, I think Jim Rohn said it best where you can, you can really work on your uh, life part-time and, mm -hmm. your, and your current profession full-time and eventually your life becomes your profession and your passions because that part-time turns into your full-time gig and people do that all the time and I think that's yeah. okay you know and there's there's two authors personalities that I really like um Gary Vaynerchuk Gary V 
who talks a lot about how it's never too late. So no matter how old you are, you can, you can do this. And, and I think about that a lot too, because when I made this jump, I, um, you know, you're nervous. You're like, am I going to, am I going to be able to, when I decided to go full time into real estate, it, you wonder, am I going to be able to put food on the table and make this work? Right. And right. you almost got to double down and do it no matter what the time. And, and at the very least, you know, I'm, I'm so fortunate that I have great friends and family that I would never, you know, be forced out on the streets. I'd at least have a couch that I could sleep on and, right. and you know, rebuild if things don't really work out. But then, you know, to your point too about it's one day at a time. And there's another author that I really like, Darren Hardy, who wrote a book called The Compound Effect. Huge. And essentially what he talks about is take a goal and break it down into what you can do to attack that goal each day. Is it making like one phone call a day to try to, you know, find a new prospect or a new, you know, a new business relationship? Or is it, you know, you want to eventually run a mile. Maybe you just start walking around the neighborhood for 10 minutes a day. And then eventually, you know, as the days progress, you're, you're running a lap and you're running four laps and then on and on and on. And so I really take that to heart and try to incorporate that in my daily life. I'm definitely not perfect, but that's, you know, that kind of philosophy is what drives me for sure. Well, it's, it's just it's the idea of striving not to be perfect, but to be better. Right. And I think yeah. that that's huge, Kirk. I think if you're getting better every day and, or like you mentioned, if you, by the way, if you haven't listened to the, the compound effect, get the audio, Google it, yes. read it, watch it. He does it on, he does it on stage all over the world. And one of my, one of my favorites, by the way, so I'm glad you brought that up, but what, yeah. what it's really helped me to do and helped others do what I help others in the business world um, and life really is reverse engineering a goal is really what it comes down to is what Darren does. And he does a great job at it. Kind of how, if you want to get to a million dollars, if you want to get to $50,000, there's steps. And there's very yeah. proven steps and success leaves clues. And if you're able to see what those success steps are, and if you want to go from 20 houses to 20 to 23, then you break down what got me to 20. Great. Let me just add a few things. And now I get to 23. Right. And that's kind yeah. of, that's the breakdown. Right. And so you mentioned, and those are, those are great realistic and attainable goals. And mm -hmm. sure you can break, can you back into 50? Sure. But do you have to No. And I think that's, what's exciting. As long as you see growth, and I think Tony Robbins says it's the best when it comes down to success is really not necessarily a, obviously a dollar amount. It's a feeling. And usually that feeling is progress. Okay. So if we're, if we're progressing, we feel successful. And when we feel right. successful, we keep becoming successful because we learned how to do it. And it's like, mm -hmm. no, it's a no brainer, right? We all have to learn how to walk. And so I, yeah. I, I love, I love the breakdown there in terms or definitely the reference of Darren Hardy. I could talk about him all day, but I won't. So tell I me. Know, I know. Yeah. I love that guy, man. He's awesome. Um, <laughs> it's funny. I, I told my cousin just had a wedding and she needs to send a hundred, get a hundred thank you notes. And she was like, God, I don't know what I'm going to do. I have a hundred thank you notes to do. I'm like, write five a day. Just do five a day. Don't even worry about the timeline. Just do five a day. And you know, before long, that's 20 days within a month, within less than a month, you're going to be done. I'd probably and, say like, I'd probably like be like outsourcers to the Philippines or something. <laughs> <laughs> They'll handwrite yeah. it. Read that for like, read the four hour work of, week. <laughs> it is a lot of work. Too. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. You're right. <laughs> but, but like, it's, it's something like that, that it's, it's just that easy to break it down and make it, make it happen. You're right. You're right. Fast they do that with breaking down books, write a page a day, right? Write yeah. two pages a day and do it first thing when you wake up, when you're fresh, when your mind's right, that kind of stuff. And people do it and they knock out several books a year and yeah. they still do their full-time gigs. And next thing you know, it's like, how? Just focused. It's like, just like eating breakfast every day. I do that every day. It's part of, yeah. it's part of my game plan, right? So if you right. want to give, first of all, where can people find you? By the way, Kirk, if they wanted to find uh, you really, online, social media, website. Really Twitter. easy. Yeah, I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Kirk Hawkins. You can easily search. I have a website, getkirk.com. Um, and, and I've got a YouTube page, and it's all easily accessible from there. So, awesome. Yeah. So go out there and search for Kirk Hawkins if you guys want to connect, follow, or reach out. Uh, final question I have for you, Kirk, is if you're going to give one piece of advice to aspiring entrepreneurs, people that – want to build in a business and life that you're doing. You're very, you're very happy. You just mentioned that, which I love by the way, because there's a life aspect of it and life wins business doesn't. So if you're yeah. not building it for that, then what are you building it for? Right? So what is, right. um, what kind of, uh, advice would you give if there was one piece of advice you give to the guys that are hustling out there and grinding to be where they want to be? I, I would say just do it. Keep going after it. Don't, um, have no regrets and, and just go, go full speed ahead. You know, you might, it might work out. You might fail. It, but like, give it a shot and, and like, don't hold back. Take, 
take the risk, I think, more than anything. There you have it, Business and Life Nation. Kirk, thank you so much for dropping your knowledge and knowledge bombs on, on the uh, show today. My pleasure. Great to talk to you. Thank you. Life Nation, you've got to remember that in order for things to change, you must change. And in order for things to get better, you must get better. You just got better by hanging out with me, Michael Levis, and the Business and Life Nation. So come back tomorrow because I'm here dropping sound bombs seven days a week, baby. If you'd like to subscribe, please do so you can take action and execute. See you tomorrow.